In this video, we will review security features of AWS. Designing with security in mind should take precedence over everything else. Trust no one. Unfortunately, this is usually an afterthought. Cloud providers have the difficult task of balancing between giving you the tools to get up and running quickly and providing some security. For example, when you launch an EC2 instance, by default, SSH is allowed from everywhere. This allows you to SSH into the device, make necessary changes, install apps, test, and so on. Even then, AWS gives you a stern warning. It is up to you, the customer, to ensure the safety of your EC2. This is part of the shared responsibility model, as you can see here. AWS is responsible for protecting its hardware and global infrastructure, but you, the architect, engineer, or sysadmin, have to protect anything you build or support. A good security practice is to build layers of protective elements. We want to ensure that if someone were to penetrate one layer, they would be stopped at the next layer. Another reason for building in layers is human error. Many of the data leaks that you have heard of in the media have been the result of someone forgetting to do something which leaves them wide open. It would be very difficult, not impossible, to forget to lock every single layer. AWS provides several layers so that we can lock down our infrastructure as much as possible, but it is our responsibility. I repeat, it is our responsibility. In this video, we will focus on the networking layers provided by AWS, such as NACLs and security groups. The default NACL does not provide any security at all. It allows all inbound traffic. We already saw that the default security group allows SSH from everywhere, but blocks all other traffic. One thing that we need to keep in mind is which rule wins when creating layers of security. For example, if you permit ICMP on the NACL, but block it on the security group, the security group wins. Although the NACL permits ICMP, the SG will block the ICMP. Let's say that we now have the opposite. The NACL denies ICMP, but the SG permits it. In this case, the NACL wins and denies all ICMP regardless of what the SG says. Now let's add some more complexity. Who would win the battle if the NACL permits ICMP, the SG permits ICMP, but a host firewall on the EC2 denies ICMP? Okay, time's up. The EC2 wins. You can use one of the many host firewalls, such as Shorewall, CS CSF, and others. In this example, I use CSF as it is easier for you to see what is going on. So to recap, the NACL now permits all traffic. The security group is permitting ICMP. And now in the host firewall, I will disable ICMP and we can run a test. And it's good to run a ping command with a dash T or minus T because that just continues it if you're using a Windows machine. If you're on a Linux machine, you don't have to worry about that. So as you can see, it times out. So even though it's permitted throughout the network security group, the host based firewall is blocking it. Very powerful if you forget to do something somewhere else and you're providing layers upon layers. And the inverse is also true. You can block everything, but make sure you're blocking everything at each point in case you forget to enable it in one place or another. Think of an apartment complex with a main entrance. This is your NACL. Once you enter the main entrance, your apartment also has a door and the lock, which represents your security group. Your bedroom also has a door and lock. This could represent the host firewall installed on your EC2. Inside your bedroom, you might have a safe and so on. 
So an easy way to understand which rule wins is to think of this analogy. In practice, if ICMP was some suspicious character, you would most likely want the main entrance locked to block his entrance. But you would also lock your apartment, bedroom, and safe. No, no one's getting in. But if the ICMP were the mailman, would you want him to enter the main entrance? Yes, you would. Would you want him entering your apartment? No, of course not. Much less the bedroom or the safe in the bedroom. So you block ICMP mailman in all areas where he should not have access. Now let's say ICMP is your child. Would you allow him or her entrance to the building? Yes. To your apartment? Yes. To your bedroom? Yes. To your safe? No. This illustrates that the deny statement has to be as close as necessary but as far as possible, and that we apply the same rules at different layers. Right off the bat, I will say that there are many more things that you can do to secure your cloud environment. Please post in the comments other things that you do for security. Please take a moment and hit that subscribe button.